bugs. Bugs is what I'm getting at. <laughs> like, okay. Hello, and welcome to the AfterSpark Podcast, an episode-by-episode recap of the Generation 1 Transformers cartoon. I'm Els. And I'm Specs. And today we're going to be talking about episode number 19, Dinoa Island Part 1. Let's talk about giant robots today, shall we? Yeah. We open with Bumblebee plus Jetpack and Power Glide flying through the air, heading towards some strange energy reading in the middle of the ocean. <sighs> Bumblebee comes back to base to get confirmation from Optimus Prime, and when it cuts to the Autobots, we see Wheeljack at the console, you know, Teletran 1, the big screen and everything, and then everyone else is like a good 60 feet back. <laughs> They're probably afraid Wheeljack's gonna blow shit up again. By basically manning their telephone? <laughs> Don't underestimate Wheeljack's ability to blow shit up. He's got a green thumb for it. Or a black thumb? I don't know. She's very, very talented at blowing shit up. Let's just go with that. At least that's how the fandom handles it. I mean, fair. Bumblebee, however, seems to be very gung-ho about this mission and excited and kind of surprised that Optimus seems to think so highly of him. Like, he's kind of... He's almost a little blushy. Yeah, he is. It's kind of cute. It's Bumblebee it's very, is very cute. It's it's sweet. And then Power Glide calls Bumblebee his little bee buddy, which is a great name. It's a great name. Yeah. Uh, Power Glide, while flying, slams into some sort of energy wave or energy field and says that it won't affect him because he's got too much pizzazz. Oh God, he's an idiot who thinks he dumped all of his points into charisma. But clearly he didn't. And then again, I'm having a hard time figuring out what stat he would have dumped them into because it's clearly not wisdom. Maybe dexterity. And I'm actually really wishing now that I'd sat down and put together a fucking stat sheet. <laughs> oh, God. That sounds nightmarish. All I know is that Power Glide talks about himself a lot. I feel like he says his name like six times in 60 seconds in his introduction. Something like that. He sort of speaks in pseudo third person. It gets kind of old. It gets old very quickly. But they had to have some way of differentiating these new Autobots from the previous ones. So you get a bit more um, out there personalities. And speech I mean, tips. I guess at least they have personalities. Or speech patterns is what I meant. Yeah. Because you've got Warpath and... All of that. Yeah. They're suddenly attacked by a giant pteranodon that carries B away in its claws. Providing his own narration, Power Glide then flies off to the rescue. B looks, like, super done through this entire sequence. Uh, he even says something to the effect that can't he just save a guy without doing a commercial? Honestly, the Autobots could probably earn money by, you know, selling off Power Glide's vocal... Oh God! For commercials, yeah, I, he he would make a good good guy to do commercials for. Oh God, him and Swindle. Oh doing God. something together. Oh God, yes, please, someone write this. <laughs> like, Swindle's a perfectly good sell guy by himself, but I mean, you want an give, infomercial. You give him the power. Uh, give him the power of Power Glide's voice. Oh yes, they would sell so much shit. God, I'm just imagining the robot infomercials now. ShamWow, OxyClean. <laughs> ShamWow, now, now sponsored by the, audio, the Autobots. ShamWow! <laughs> God, there'd be some sort of power glide pun in somewhere. Ugh, you know it would. <laughs> and then, well, so, back on topic. Power glide does indeed chase the pteranodon off, but it drops Bumblebee, whose jetpack is no longer functioning properly. Like, it's super beat all to hell. Uh, yeah, after, you know, being picked up by a pteranodon. B does eventually land safely with the help of a palm tree cushioning his impact. It's a thing, it's a thing. And okay, I figured out where Power glide put his stats. He clearly blasts B's jetpack with some sort of ray of healing from his forehead. So magic? Like... He's like the world's shittiest wizard. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even want to think about him being a wizard. I, he's like one of the flim flam men, if he is a freaking wizard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. I should say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Bumblebee explores the immediate area on uh, the island that they have crash landed on. There are a fuck ton of dinosaurs here. And B is promptly attacked by a T-Rex. 
To which he runs back to Paraglide and sort of jerks him him by the arm in the direction that the T-Rex is now chasing him. Or is coming from. It's, yeah, like yeah. The, the T-Rex that is chasing him is coming from. It's like, here, here, look at this thing. It wants to eat me. <laughs> Save me. Do the, do the thing. Kick its ass. Uh, Paraglide transforms and B hangs a ride by grabbing on top of uh, Paraglide's plane mode and they fly off. <laughs> it looks very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's probably messing with Paraglide's, you know, uh, aerodynamic surfaces, but okay. The power of magic robots. <laughs> yeah. Back at the Ark, B and Paraglide have clearly reported the living fossils they ran into the, to the other Autobots. And they're, they proceed to insult the Dinobots, you know, like normal, which is kind of sad. You're all terrible. I want you to know this. <laughs> yeah. Wheeljack tries to mitigate the general air of disrespect by saying that the Dinobots have good qualities and he's been trying to teach them stuff. Wheeljack is a good dino dad. <laughs> yeah. And then Hopper decides to be a dick about this statement. Yep, yep. Shut up, Hopper. <laughs> Shut up, Hopper. <laughs> Wheeljack's idea of demonstrating Grimlock's newfound control over his powers, his, his newfound dexterity, is to have Blaster transform into his alt mode and then have Grimlock change the radio stations with fire breath or laser breath or however they refer to it. All of this seems like a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. It, It is. Like, yes, you can demonstrate his dexterity some other way, dude. That doesn't involve fire and possibly melting your communications officer. <laughs> yeah. Grimlock, to his credit, does actually succeed in changing the station without incinerating Blaster, much to the chagrin of Ironhide, Trailbreaker, and Sideswipe. They have no taste. They don't like any of this music. But uh, considering it was changed to a rock station, I would expect this from Ironhide and possibly Trailbreaker, but Sideswipe. You're a young, hip dude. <laughs> Sides, there is no way you don't listen to rock. I am not buying this for a single goddamn second. Maybe he's more of a pop guy. Oh god, now I'm just like, now I'm just imagining him doing karaoke to Britney Spears songs. Thank you. Thank you for that gift of Britney Spears in my brain. <laughs> just imagine him going, catch me baby one more time or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> just... Mm, mm, perfection. And you know he would do it at karaoke just to drive Prowl nuts. Or maybe he likes Dolly Parton. <laughs> Jolly! <laughs> the rest of the bots and humans in the room proceed to celebrate. Wheeljack, in particular, seems super proud of Grimlock. <sighs> of course, something has to go wrong. And that thing is slag and sludge, getting interested in what's going on and then proceeding to bump into Grimlock, who then begins spewing fire around the room uncontrollably. I love it, because Grimlock says, Slag, sludge, go away! Me, Grimlock, demonstrating finesse, whatever that mean, before immediately turning around and destroying something else with his extremely long tail. Yeah. Honestly, the perspective on that made no sense. It looked way too long. I, I'm, like, not really sure what happened there, to be honest. Yeah, the situation proceeds to further unravel with the, unra with the arrival of the ever-curious Snarl and Swoop, who want to come and investigate all this shit. Which, congrats! You lured the first two idiots with the racket, and now you've caught the other two. Well, they're five for five. <laughs> they are five for five! <laughs> the Dinobots get dangerously close to Teletran 1, but Trailbreaker uses a shield to protect it, but he, like, shoots it, and then it hits, and it sort of spreads, and it's weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure how this guy's powers work. Yeah. We see several previously unseen Autobots who rush in to put out the room, which is now on fire. The main two we get to see are Inferno, a fire truck, and Red Alert, a fire Lamborghini. Yes, really, that's what he's supposed to be. Well, I suppose it was either that, or a fire Datsun, or a fire Porsche, or a fire Minibot. Do you want a fire Minibot? Because that's how you get a fire Minibot. <laughs> so I looked it up. I believe his toy is a police car version of Sideswipe and Sunstreaker's mold, and it literally was listed as, like, the police version. Um, but I'm laughing because I'm like, oh, no, now I'm wondering, is there a police version of the Datsun or the Porsche or the Minibots? <laughs> well, there could be a police version of the Lamborghini in Italy. Well, isn't Prowl? What is Prowl? Prowl's a Datsun. Oh, Prowl's a Datsun. Then we already had a, we already had a police Datsun. <laughs> yeah. So... 
It's just, I don't think, because, like, Crown Victorias were, like, the main police car for oh, a while. Yeah. And now there's Mustangs and stuff, and I've never seen a Lamborghini. Yeah, like, it's just, it, it, there would never be a fire Lamborghini. <laughs> well, let me look this up. Because I now want to know if there's a police... No? Let me see. Oh my god. Italy's newest police car is a Lamborghini. As of 2017. That's still 30 years too late. I'm not looking at it. (laughs) Well, there could be other Lamborghinis there. But a Lamborghini makes sense for... Like Italy. Yeah. Ratchet is rather resigned to having to repair the entire room now with Sparkplug offering to help. Well, he's also got Grapple. Oh, yeah. Grapple's in here. Yeah, and, um, shoot, I forget his name. Hoist. Grapple and Hoist. The Dinobots, however, continue to blunder around with Sideswipe getting the brilliant idea of fighting them to a standstill. <sighs> I mean, that is basically... that That is basically his entire modus operandi. Slamming shit till it stops being a problem. True. Uh, then the Red Idiot Brigade rush in like, well, idiots. This being Sideswipe, Cliffjumper, and Ironhide. <laughs> well, they did decide to color code their hotheads. They did! <laughs> they did! <laughs> well, leave them all red. They're idiots. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, they are stopped in their tracks by Optimus Prime. And Optimus has Grimlock bring the other Dinobots to heal. He actually shows some modicum of respect and trust towards Grimlock here. Wow. It's an improvement. Definitely is. They then get the brilliant idea of sending the Dinobots to the newly discovered island, where they'll be less likely to break shit, or at least shit the Autobots care about. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Cutting away, we see that Ravage and Soundwave are eavesdropping on the Autobots as they exit from the side of a mountain. Why do they even have this? I guess they wanted a back door. They wanted somewhere where they wouldn't be mobbed by paparazzi, except you never see the paparazzi. I feel like there should be paparazzi. I mean, if a giant alien robots landed on Earth, I feel like paparazzi would be all over that shit, but... Either that or someone that wants to sell magazines. We've already discussed the magazine subscription sales. Yeah. Wheeljack and Ratchet, uh, being good parents, actually wish their babies luck. They're sending their kids off to summer camp. That is kind of what it feels like, yes. <laughs> yeah, except there aren't any moderators. Yep, the most yep, mod- we, are leaving, we are leaving the babies in charge of the babies. Oh, God, no, they're basically sending them off to live in the woods for a week. <laughs> More or less, they're basically doing what Izumi did with the Elrix. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 that's close. Oh, God, except now, now Spike hops into Power Glide to come with them. Like. What? Why are we bringing the squishy? He wants to sightsee. Unfortunately, he didn't bring any goddamn camera. Because you know Chip would be all over this. Yeah, Chip would like to see this. Well, I guess we needed the human element. Well, that human element's gonna end up smeared across the bottom of either the organic or the robot T-Rex. I fucking guarantee it. Unfortunately, yeah. Or he's gonna puke everywhere because you just know Power Glide's gonna pull a freaking rodeo with every goddamn ride he takes this kid on. Oh, yeah. Spike does actually put on a seatbelt here, which is kind of new. <laughs> I figure planes would have some sort of restraint device even in the 80s, but who That's knows? That's my guess. That's our guess, anyway. Soundwave comms Megatron about the mysterious island discovered by the Autobots. And clearly, it's shit on Starscream hours. Megatron insinuates that at least some Decepticons don't disappoint him. At some point somewhere, some version of Megatron has to have all of you disappoint me mug or something. Oh my god, yes. Now I want that. I want a, mu- I want a tiny mug of that to hand my G1 Megatron. It's just... He absolutely has that mug. I don't know if this one has that mug, but one of them's got that mug. Yeah. Maybe Prime Megatron. Oh, disappoint me. Soundwave's like sipping his own shit that says like number one communications officer because he knows he ain't talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> so Soundwave sends Laserbeak after the Autobot group to, you know, keep tabs on them like a competent communication officer does. Right. Of course, as the Autobot group gets near the island, Power Glide decides to show Spike his moves. I called it. I, I freaking called it. Power Glide just cannot resist showboating. But he's a plane. Show, show planing, show flying, showing off. <laughs> Spike decides to name the new island, and uh, 
He goes with Dinobot Island because who, who let the fourteen year old name shit? Guys, guys, you Power Glide, you, you talk all the time. Surely you can think of a better name than this. He may not care. <sighs> of course, and I, I I feel like his suggestion would be like, let's call it Power Glide Island. Well, of course, because the most important person was first on the ground. But he wasn't! Bumblebee was! <laughs> yes, but that was falling. He wasn't the first person to actually oh, set the on it. I don't know. I don't... I don't think I care. <laughs> the Autobots land in Laserbeak land some distance away, still keeping an eye on them, because again, competent. Yeah. Competent soldier. <laughs> One of the locals attempts to buddy up to Laserbeak, but gets eye lasers for their trouble. Laserbeak's not even remotely in the vicinity of fucking around here. He's got a job to do. Laserbeak also conveniently pulls out his camera as Spike starts going on about all the energy sources on the island. He mentions an oil pit. How is there an oil pit here? That wouldn't be, like, safe. But I mean, okay, they're probably talking about tar. I mean, like, that's what what we assumed is that, like, or at least it's what I'm assuming, is they have to mean tar pit, but I'm still not sure how that's a source of energy. Well, I mean, I guess there's the thermal energy, but I don't get how they get it. Who the fuck knows? I, or at least, how would that be less difficult than, like, I don't know, solar energy in the middle of the fucking ocean? Or wind power, or, or wind you know, power, water or wave power, power or whatever. The zillion other things the Decepticons could be doing under the radar and not being caught with. They're dumb robots, and it's an 80s cartoon. We've already had discussions oh, about so many. Of course, the first thing Power Glide says uh, is that it's a good thing those cons don't know about this. Well, it's already been jinxed. Yep, and now 30 seconds later, Power Glide has a horrifying realization that he has lost the human. He's a really bad babysitter. He can't be trusted. Clearly not. Cutting back to Spike, he is immediately picked up by a giant green dinosaur out of nowhere. One that obviously doesn't have a basis in reality. I mean, it looks like a weird dragon. Minus, you know, actually being able to bring flame. He is then dropped into a nest with some absurdly huge eggs, like way too big for the dinosaur that has dropped him in there. Maybe it's the dad that dropped him in and the female's bigger or something? Or maybe they're like kiwis. I don't know. I think you're giving this show far more credit than it deserves. <laughs> Swoop comes in for the rescue. That's because Swoop is a good bird. Spike gets dropped off near a lake with Swoop telling him to be careful before flying off. Nessie then rises from behind Spike and grabs them in their mouth, swimming off. Oh, oh, pleasy sores. I'm surprised the Autobots didn't decide to build someone based off of one. <laughs> Paddles. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Power Glide and the Dinobots hear Spike screaming and run over. Except, I don't know, Power Glide flies for like two seconds. Yeah, for a whole two seconds. He is extremely gung-ho for a rescue until he spots the giant water monster. And then he's like, ah, oh, how about you guys do it instead to the Dinobots? Yeah. Spike is then rescued by Sludge after Nessie drops him. And in a blissful moment of sanity, Spike decides to return home as he is tired of being Dindins. Yeah, for once a competent decision was made. Weird. Laserbeak, uh, after, you know, presumably getting all of this on video, returns to the Decepticon base where he displays the recorded information for Dinobot Island to the rest of the cons. Megatron, well, clearly Megatron's been taking notes from his comic iteration here as his badge is bright red. <laughs> For, like, one shot. Megs is gunning, get it, get it, because he's a gun, for a takeover of Dinobot Island, but Starscream, who clearly does not want to be a flying dino dinner, objects. Regardless, Megatron orders an attack in some completely ridiculous, amazing visual framing. Megatron is just standing there, in the middle of the group, with an arm up in a victory pose, flanked by two Decepticons on either side, with thrust whom we haven't met yet, framed by Megatron's magnificent thighs. A placement seems so, so phallic. Especially considering his name. Yes, but it gets worse because Thrust is one of the cone heads, which means he has, you know, a pointy head. Yes. Which only makes this worse or better, really, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> to, to clarify, Thrust is way in the background and he's not like 
lying on a stomach between Megatron's yeah, I know, but he's like, he looks tiny in the distance, and he's right under Megatron's crotch. <laughs> yes. And I'm just like, why did you frame it like that? <laughs> Back on Dinobot Island! The Dinobots are training. <laughs> Grimlock does not have the vocabulary for this. What do you mean, Specs? Do flying stuff sounds plenty descriptive to me. It's pretty descriptive, but it's not, you know, good for specifics. The cons land, uh, Megatron being a dick to Starscream. When isn't he? Oh, uh, never really. <laughs> And then Starscream mentions being worried about the bizarre energy waves. Because, you know, scientists and shit, right? They actually remember he did that. Yeah, I know, right? The group splits up to gather energon from the various energy sources on the island. Starscream uh, proceeds to freak the fuck out as the weather begins to destabilize. But Megatron just points at him and tells him to get back to work. From the air. Smooth the spots the Decepticons from the air. Grimlock, uh, after Soup gets back and tells him this, orders the rest of the Dinobots to attack. Meanwhile, Spike and Bumblebee are coming out of a library with some lovely, lovely research in hand. Which we couldn't read the titles of, but it made no It was gibberish. Sense. Yeah, like what we could see, it was just complete gibberish. Yeah. Suddenly, a portal opens up and some barbarians writing motherfucking mammoths come through. I don't know who the voice actor is here, but they are clearly just making silly noises into the mic, and it is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what time period these barbarians are supposed to be from. We, uh, we had a discussion, but apparently they've got some metalworking going on, because one of them was wearing a horned helmet. Yeah, and it's just like, I don't even know, but okay! <laughs> Disarray ensues as giant mammoths proceed to fuck with traffic patterns. Spike says that mammoths haven't existed for 50,000 years! Oh, honey, most of them didn't die out about until about, you know, 10,000 years ago. So you're super off, Spike. It, some of them actually survived until longer, too. <laughs> yes, but that was a very small population on a very... Um, Isolated island, essentially. Yeah. They probably had some issues at the end. <laughs> Sounds like it. Spike and Bee escape into a dilapidated building for cover, but the mammoths ran the building and it comes down on top of the two of them. Yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Back on Dinobot Island, Megatron uses some well-placed blasts from his fusion cannon to create a stampede of three you know, regular dinosaurs to herd the Dinobots off a cliff. The Dinobots can fly. They literally flew earlier in this episode. Did, did everyone here just collectively dump that fact from their brain? I mean, the robots pretty frequently forget they have abilities, but at least these guys are babies, so we can kind of forgive them. Also, they may not be able to fly in their alt modes, with the exception of Swoop. So, I don't know. <sighs> but I don't know why they wouldn't transform. We don't know what their reaction times are when they're startled, and well, maybe they true. don't want to hurt the, uh, the other dinosaurs. I'd be more willing to believe that, but I still think transforming and jumping up in the air would be faster. It would. It would, but I don't know. We're not... We don't exactly have a view into the minds of these giant robot children. And the Dinobots, unfortunately, fall into a tar pit. Because of course they do. <laughs> yeah. Including poor Swoop, who only fell in because Grimlock basically fell on top of him. Poor yes. Swoop. <laughs> yeah. And that's where today's episode ends. Join us next time for more Time Warps, Cowboys, Barbarians, and Pirates Galore. Yeah. So, do we have some fanfic recommendations for today? Yes, we have two of them. Uh, the first is Pounce by Irian Sato. Uh, it's in the G1 cartoon continuity, rated K. Um, it's Jen, there aren't any pairings, and the characters are Swoop and an unnamed Decepticon. And the uh, summary is, an infiltrator attempts to escape the Autobots. And I basically decided on this because Swoop. Because unfortunate things happen to Swoop in this episode. Poor baby. <laughs> and it's a one-shot. It's also very, very short. Um, less than 600 words, I think. So it's a nice little bite. And uh, second recommendation is Wild Man's World by Harpocrates. In, it's in the Transformers War for Cybertron continuity. It's rated K. Gen. Even though it was written for a rare pair bingo, there is no overt shipping or anything. The closest you get to it is someone giving someone else a bouquet of crystals. 
And that's more, I would like you to feel better than anything else. So yeah, there's no pairings. Uh, our characters are Perceptor, Grimlock, Ratchet, and Slug. And in summary, they made it off of Cybertron, but that doesn't mean all of their problems are solved. Perceptor juggles morals, obligations, Insecticons, and Grimlock. And, well, I picked this one because it's got Grimlock in it, but it also has the rest of the Dinobots, which I thought... The way, the, way, the way they're handled is pretty different from, you know, G1, but I liked it. So, uh, if you're not aware, uh, War for Cybertron is a PlayStation 3 game. The continuity, it's technically in the aligned continuity, which is technically supposed to, like, encapsulate the video ga the War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron Prime, and Robots in Disguise and Rescue Bots, but uh, I feel like the video games feel pretty distinct. Uh, but, so, the way they handle the Dinobots in the game is pretty different, and the Dinobots never show up in Prime or Robots in Disguise, really, so... Well, they do have Grimlock and Robots in Disguise, It's not the same Grimlock. The same. Yeah. It's not the same Grimlock, which is this whole other kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it, they it definitely are handled differently, because in the game, they were normal Autobots that were captured by uh, Shockwave, Shockwave and, and experimented on. Okay, yeah, this deals pretty heavily with the aftermath of the experimentation, at least yeah. on Grimlock. Yeah, because... Basically, they did not have dinosaur alt modes before Shockwave got a hold of them. And whatever Shockwave had done had really, really fucked with Grimlock's mind. Yeah. As it will be very, very evident if you read this, which it was good. I, rec I definitely recommend it. And yeah, it's, it's one that you haven't read yet. Yeah, I need to read this one because I actually, I really, I'm very fond of Perceptor anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you've actually played War for Cybertron, which I haven't. I keep thinking I should play it while you're over or something, because I, I do think you would enjoy the plot, but it's a first-person shooter, so I don't know how interesting it is to watch. It's... They might have had it available on computer at some They point. did originally, but because the um, copyright... Yeah. They, uh, is it EA? Whatever company had it yeah. lost the copyright. Um, so so I, they pulled the digital releases. Now the only way to get it is a hard, is a hard, hard copy. copy. And yeah. the only hard copies I could find were on PlayStation. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess I could theoretically get a PS... Actually, I'd want a PS4, I guess, because I kind of want to get the new Spider-Man game. Yeah, you can't play PS3 games on oh. it. It's, they're not backwards compatible, that's why I have the... I hate that. I know, I know, I feel ya. Okay, let's get back on <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> T tangent! And I believe we have art recommendations. So for fan art today, we have Misaki, who does a variety. I've seen animated, IDW, some Beast Wars stuff. They have a very simple, cute style. There's a lot of animated art or characters done in the style of Transformers Animated. Uh, they've also been doing quite a bit of TMNT stuff as of the time I uh, took my notes for this. Uh, today, we have linked a Transformers Animated Style Dinobot, a neat-looking sound wave, and Rodimus not wanting to work. <laughs> He wants to play Hookie. He does. It's Rodimus. Hookie is like his default state of being. <laughs> <laughs> and that just about wraps it up for us today. Remember to check us out on Tumblr or Pillowfort as AfterSpark-Podcast for any additional information, show notes, or links we may have mentioned. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at AfterSparkPod, all one word, and various other locations by searching for AfterSpark Podcast such as AO3, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and YouTube, just to name a few. Till next time, I'm Specs. And I'm Els. Toodles.